I would like to introduce you to half of the anthropomorphized anthropomorphized anthrop anthropomorphized character, the anthropomorphized version, anthropomorphized character, character, anthropomorph anthropomorph the anthropomorphized version of it's not version you dummy. Uh, anthropomorphized version <sighs> the anthropomorphized version <laughs> <I'm> so... <laughs> the anthropomorphized oh my gosh <laughs> similar 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 <laughs> similar similar <laughs> Likewise, I'm excited to roll out the series right... Uh, something in my eye. Darn dog hair. You guys would be absolutely astonished at how many licks it's taken to get to the center of this Tootsie Pop. Mm. Ugh. All of this sucks. Greetings all. So, some of you may not realize that I've wanted to start video reviews for many, many years now, but I've never had the right idea or the courage to pursue it. I've spent the better part of a year thinking about what these reviews would be, how they would look, and how I could differentiate myself from the crowded reviewing community. I finally have that idea, and today I'm proud to formally introduce you to Patrick Wapner's Court. This video will not be a review per se, but will serve as an insightful look into the series so you, the viewers, understand the methods to my madness and for any review I have in the future. Every reviewer out there has their niche, their style, their coup de croix, their creme de la creme. Is that the right word? <clears throat> and I love many of them. And I need structure. I need consistency. I need objective data. Straight to the point, no sugarcoating data. I have opinions and I want to be entertained as well. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that any of the other YouTubers aren't objective or entertaining. I'm just saying I want to do something different, something unique. I think I have the answer. I'm excited to roll out the series right now. Get it? See what I did there? Clever girl. Many of you are probably asking who or what is Patrick Wapner's court? I'm glad you asked, curious viewer. First of all, I will not be hosting these videos. I have to remove myself from these things to remain as neutral as possible. I have actually hired a retired municipal court judge to preside over each case. His name is, of course, Patrick Wapner. He's an old school judiciary scholar, but he's fair with a sense of humor. He's much funnier than I am. His style is a little unorthodox and holds the colonial courts in a very high regard. Ironically, I would introduce you to him, but his horse broke down and he couldn't be here in time for the filming. You suck! As such, he's given me permission to discuss his forum with you at this time. You'll meet him in the first review. Okay, so for each case, a transforming robot action figure will be put on trial and the evidence will be evaluated against a number of defined categories that are key factors to fans and collectors alike. These categories will be, in natural sequential order, packaging, alternate mode, transformation, robot mode, integrity, comparisons, kibble, weapons and widgets, articulation, playability, nitpicks and nuance, and expense. Using verdicts obtained from these categories, a ruling will be issued, followed by, you guessed it, sentencing. Since these reviews could mean life, death, or a servitude in storage for a figure, we'll need to obtain a reliable and calculable ruling. How will the judge arrive at his decision? To do so, two things need to be clarified here to the audience, hence this specific video. First, 12 individual verdicts will need to be obtained and tallied. To do this, each category will be on a plus or minus rating system made up of ones and zeros assigned to 10 individual criterion within that respective category. Either a figure does something well or it doesn't. There could be no gray area here. I'm gonna pull out my handy dandy computer here because I've got it all built into an Excel spreadsheet that does all the calculations for me. Uh -huh. Here is what each category will look like. 
we have included sample ratings for this discussion so you understand how this section works. So first we're going to start with packaging, of course. So the items we're going to talk about in packaging include function of the packaging, presentation, box art, bio, tech specs, is the packaging difficult to open, the materials used, the condition when it arrived, are you saving it, displaying it, what about the space, is the thing huge, is it just going to take up so much space with a figure this small and a box this big, and finally, mint in box versus mint in sealed box capabilities, such that if you think about a figure that comes in on a card, you can't open it at least really well or nicely or cleanly, open it, mess with the figure, and then put it back in and close it back up nicely. That can be a problem to some. Next, alt mode. We're going to look at the accuracy, the homage to the source material. Basically, if it comes from a movie or TV show, video game, comic book, does it match the source material? Paint, sticker, chrome applications, the amount and quality of them, the color palette, is it drab, bright, exciting, boring, the cohesiveness, the location choices, do those colors match? As an example, if you all remember, Age of Extinction Deluxe Bumblebee, the paint of the hood was drastically different from the rest of the plastic used. The kibble, is it a robot in disguise? Are there exposed hands? Is there a head? Etc. Now this section will feed into the kibble portion, but I have it here so I remember to do it. Again, robot in disguise. Are there panel lines, design gaps or voids, molding details, functional expectations achieved? So this basically means if it's supposed to roll, swivel, pivot, or move, does it roll, swivel, pivot, or move? I threw these sections in here so the judge didn't forget to run through the comparisons at this point before the transformation happened. So we'll look at the comparisons. Does it fit within the intended line, the scale, uh, or does it fit with the aesthetic? Next we have transformation. Is it intuitive? Do you need the instructions? Does it feel natural? The inventiveness, is it new? Does it feel new or is it a repaint? The five F's as I call them. Is it fun? Is it fluid? Is it fresh? How is the feeling of the transformation? And I'm sure that you all know what I'm talking about there. And is it frustrating? Because things can be complex without being frustrating. Are there tools needed to release the hands or the heads or anything? You should need tools to get parts out. Instructions, do they match the motions? Are they clear? And of course, finally, is it overly complicated or overly simple for the intended audience? The robot mode, we'll be looking at very similar things for the first five criteria. So we'll be looking at, obviously, the accuracy or the homage to the source material, paint, sticker, chrome applications, mountain quality, color palette, molding details, and then we start getting into unique stuff, like the proportions, the silhouette of the figure. Does it look thin in the waist? Does it look too bulky? Are the arms too long like an ape? Does it hold together well? Everything should have a defined place to click in, tab in, or detent in. Again, kibble, just so the judge doesn't forget about it, is put here and will feed into the other category. The backpack, is it big? Is it bulky? Is it obtrusive? The vehicle junk hanging off of it that's not a part of the design aesthetic. Faux parts, like wheels, grills, windows, roofs, heads. Anything that is a cheat, we'll do our best to consider the ramifications if the design just couldn't get there but we appreciate the rest of the design or it was just a lazy cheat. Again, comparisons, same deal here. Integrity, and this is a big one and everybody knows it. Integrity is essentially the quality of the figure. You could have something that looks great but when you start fiddling with it and you start transforming it and it's just as garbage. Materials used are they high-end materials like rubber, plastic, or die-cast? The plastic that is chosen, is it of good quality, poor quality, medium grade? The build of the figure, the joints, the connections during transformation, the looseness or stiffness of everything, the gate and the sprue flash from the molding process, damage to the part as it comes out of the packaging. Is it hollow or solid? And finally, is the figure fragile or is it kid-proof? The first out of the next two categories is 
being fed from earlier on or later on. In this particular case, comparisons, we've already gone over that. Secondly, kibble. We've already gone over the robot and the alt mode, but now it's, there's a section here that's pulling from the weapons category, which is next. Here we look at weapons and widgets, or you could say weapons and accessories, right? So is there more than one weapon provided with the figure? You get a bonus if that's the case, you know? Or is, are they solid or cheaply made? The paint sticker chrome applications of that, the amount and quality. Does it fit the character? Does it match the toy? We know that sometimes these weapons that are provided don't make sense. The cool factor, that's always huge. Does it work as a weapon accessory or is it an afterthought? Because we've had some instances where I'd love to be at the design table when this discussion happened. What are we gonna do with that piece? What do you think, Pete? Uh, make it a shield. Brilliant. The they didn't have to, but I'm glad they did it category. It's a nice little perk at the end, something you wouldn't expect to see, something that's a just a happy surprise. The kibble here in robot mode, does the weapon have a place to go? Does it just have to be in the hand? Same thing with the integration of the alternate mode. Does the weapon or accessory have a place to go? Or is it a drawer part? <sighs> Articulation. Everybody knows about this. The head, the shoulders, bicep, elbows, wrists, hips, thighs, knees, ankles, and other. The next category is an interesting one because I think that the articulation and the weapons and everything else preceding it feeds into it in that if the figure can't be used as it's intended, then what's the point? So is the figure sure-footed? Can it stand normally? Is it back or front heavy? We'll do the old earthquake test to see if it falls over. Can the figure hold its weapons and accessories? Can the figure wield its weapons? Meaning if can it hold it up or does it droop? Posability, right? It might have all the articulation in the world, but it won't be worth anything if it can't hold up its own weight or have feet that are big enough to hold it. Gimmicks. If they do have gimmicks, they need to be done well. You don't want it to be a hindrance. multiple modes. So if there is a third mode, fan mode, combiner mode, whatever it is, all of these modes will be considered in the rating. Interactive interplay. Do the figures interact with each other well? Displayability. So for collectors like myself, it's nice to put it on a shelf and make it look nice because that's my version of playability. Crucial pieces that are easily lost needed to complete a figure. Without it, the toy would be worthless, i.e. Headmasters. I think the Titans Return line or Headmasters things are cool, they're fun, they're, they're interesting, but if you lose the head... And then finally, of course, does it reach its targeted demographic? The nitpicks and nuance. So here we're gonna have a free field. We're gonna air things out that bug, bug us the most and or heap praise on a figure. If we feel that the figure has not been done justly from previous things or if it just fell short and you want an extra little oomph, this is gonna be a little bit of an opinion based. We're gonna try and keep it as objective as possible. And by doing that, we'll ask questions like, does it scratch that itch when you purchased it? Does it fill the void in your collection that you were looking for? Mold fatigue, is the repaint repetitiveness working against it? Has it lost its gusto? Parts forming, is it inventive or lazy? And one of the biggest aspects about this category is, is it memorable? Do you remember it long after? Do you walk by your collection sometimes and go, you know what, that one was awesome. And then finally, in the ratings categories, we have expense, and this is a big one. Here, obviously, we won't have 
ones or zeros. This will just have to be the line that we choose and how the figure stacks up to how much it cost. Now the cost may have been back when you purchased it or the cost will be today on the market depending on when the review takes place. Let's say the judge does a review on a figure that is three, four years old just for entertainment value. But we might look at the price of today's market versus three or four years ago to see if, if you wanted to purchase one, would it be worth the price it is now? So I'm gonna let you guys take a look at this category. They're funny descriptions that we've come up with and I'm very confident that this is a way that will help us give it the best ranking possible. And you'll notice that we have a couple bonus criterion in that, of course, if you buy something and it's exactly what you expected and you get what you pay for, that's perfect, right? That's, that's what you expect. But over and above the extra mile, that's where you'll get the extra points if you feel as though you got a deal or if you even stole it. Okay, so with all of that said, the second aspect that needs to be clarified is this. I understand that one category does not carry the same weight of importance as another. I get that. While the opinion of importance will vary from person to person, we have established what we believe is a strategically selected contribution system to best match the community's general consensus. How is that possible, you may ask? It's based on this reporter's legally obtained stack of truth. I am an active member of TFW 2005's boards and I subscribe to numerous YouTube reviewers most of which are a mix of style, presentation, entertainment, and substance. However, they all share very similar opinions on what matters most, as does most of the fandom, and this is the figure itself. Quality versus cost, and does it do what it's supposed to do? All the rest is gravy, with varying degrees of saturation. The weighted contributions we have chosen for each verdict are as follows. For packaging, we've selected 5%. Alternate mode, 10%. Transformation, 15%. Robot mode, 10%. Integrity, 15%. Comparisons, 5%. Kibble, 2.5%. Weapons and widgets, 10%. Articulation, 7.5%. Playability, 7.5%. Nitpicks and nuance, 2.5%. And expense is at 10%. With a possible score of 100%, sans the possibility that we might go over a little bit if a figure got bonus points in the expense category. Now, the reason why the weighted contributions are the way they are is because we feel as though the figure and the transformation, the quality, and the expense and weapons are the most important. I think most of you would agree with that. Now, Using the category verdict examples provided earlier, this is how the final ruling would look following the formulated calculations for our pretend figure. As you can see, this method should provide a unique ruling per figure that is consistently developed. In this example that I'm showing you, this figure would have obtained an 81.3% ruling. You'll notice that each category's weight will play a big factor in the ultimate decision. And finally, sentencing. This part may not be as scientific or objective as the rest of the trial, but it will represent the fate of a figure on trial at the judge's discretion. <laughs> if the figure is found guilty of too many crimes, the sentence could implement capital punishment such as burning at the stake, acid, firing squad. <laughs> it completely depends on the judge's mood that day. In cases like that, the judge may request the assistance of a grand jury <laughs> on which sentence to hand down by way of a majority rules vote. So now, as you can clearly see, there are so many things to talk about when reviewing a toy. Crazy, right? But your time is important and we understand you don't want to sit through a long-winded 45-minute review. You want an abridged version. You want to be entertained. You want to watch these reviews even if you watched three or four reviews of the same toy the same day or maybe a toy that's several years old. Maybe it's irrelevant and you still want to watch our reviews. That's why this particular video exists, to get the formalities out of the way once 
only to be revisited if you need a refresher. We should be able to burn through these topics efficiently. We may not be able to touch on every criteria within a category during the review itself, but if it's worth noting, we'll make a note. Okay, so let's discuss the elephant in the room. I know some or many of you may disagree with this system, and that's okay. There will be disagreements, but I believe this system will minimize those occurrences and will be the most thoroughly entertaining, informational, and objective on YouTube, said the dapper nerd subjectively. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everyone has followed me through this and find this both exciting and interesting. This is how my mind works, and I want to invite you into it but not too deep. You might find some weird stuff in there.